Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read 2 Samuel 16 to 21, Proverbs, Proverbs 20, and Psalm 118. Let's get started. When David had passed a little beyond the slum, Ziba the servant of Mephibosheth met it. He was a couple of donkeys addled, saddled, bearing 200 loads of bread, 100 bunches of raisins, 100, 100 of summer fruits, and a skin of wine. And, and the king said to Ziba, why have you brought the Ziba? The donkeys are for the king's household to ride on, the bread and the summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine for those who train in the wilderness to drink. And the king said, And where is your master's son? Ziba said to the king, Behold, he remains in Jerusalem. And then he said, Today the house of Israel will give me back the kingdom of my father. And then he said, the king said to Ziba, Behold, all that belonged to Mephibosheth is now yours. And Ziba said, I pay him, so let me ever find favour in you, my sight, my lord the king. <clears throat> and King David came to the harem. There came out a man of the family of the house of Saul. His name was Shimea, uh, son of Gera, son of Gera, and he, as he came, he cursed continually, and he threw stones at David, at David, and David and uh, all the servants of, of King David, and all the people, and all the mighty men who were on his right hand and on his left, and Shimea said as he cursed, get out, get out you man of, get out you man of blood, you worthless man. The Lord has avenged on you all the blood of the house of Saul. In his place you reign, and the Lord has given all the kingdom into the hand of your son Absalom. See, your evil is on you, for you are a man of blood. Then Abisha, Abisha the son of Jerusalem, you said to the king, Why should the dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over and take off his head. But the king said, hey, won't you? What have I, do, I to do with him? You sons of Jerusalem, is he cursing because the Lord has sent him? Curse David, who then shall say, Why, why have you done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my own son seeks my life. How much more may this Benjamin die? Now leave him alone, and let him curse, for the Lord has told him to. It may be that the Lord will look on the wrong done to you. Hath the Lord will repay me with good for his cursing today. So David and his men went on the road, while Shimei and I went along on the hillside opposite him, and cursed as he went, and threw stones at him and flung dust. And the king and all the people with him, who were with him, arrived weary at the Jordan, and there he refreshed himself. Now Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahithophel with him. Now, and when Hushai the archite, David's friend, came to Absalom, Hushai said to Absalom, Long live the king, long live the king. And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this your loyalty to your friend? Why did you not go with your friend? And Hushai said to Absalom, No, for whom? No, for whom the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel have chosen, his I'll be, and with him I will remain. And again, whom should I serve? Should it not be his son? As I have served your father, so I'll serve you. And Absalom said to Ahithophel, Give your counsel, what shall I do? And Ahithophel said to Absalom, Go unto your father's concubines, whom he has left to keep the house, and all Israel will hear that you have made yourself a stench to your father, and the hand of all who will with you will be strengthened. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the roof, and Absalom went in to his father's concubines in the side of Bolivia. Now in those days the counsel that Ahithophel gave was as if one counsel consulted the word of God. So it was all the counsel of Ahithophel was seen, both by David and by Absalom. Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Let me choose twelve thousand men, and I will arise and pursue David tonight, and I will come upon him, come upon him when, while he is weary and discouraged. And throw him into a panic, and all the people who will wish him will flee. And I'll strike down only the king, and I'll bring all the people back to you as a bride comes home to her husband. You'll see for life, well, you'll see for life of only one man, and all the people will be at peace. And the advice seemed right in the eyes of Absalom and all the elders of Israel. And Absalom said, Call Hushai the archite, Osir, and let us hear what he has to say. And when Hushai came to Absalom, Absalom said to him, Thus has Ahithophel spoken, shall, do, shall we do as he says, if not, you speak. And Hushai said to Absalom, This time the counsel that Ahithophel has given us is not good. Hushai said, You shall know that your father and his men are mighty men, and that they are en enraged, like a bear robbed of their cubs in the field. Besides, your father is expert in war. He will not spend the night with the people. He held, even now he has hidden himself in one of the pits or in some other place. And as soon as some of the people fought the first attack, 
Rabbi Hazel will say, there has been slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. Absalom, and even the valiant men, whose heart is like the heart of the lion, will utterly melt with fear. For all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man, and though that those who are with him are valiant men, but my counsel is that all Israel be gathered to you, from Dan to Bishra, and it's the sand by the sea for multitude, and that you go to battle in person. And so we shall come upon him in some place where he is to be found, and we shall lie upon him as dew falls on the ground. And of him all, and all the men with him, and not one will be left. If he withdraws into the sea, then all Israel will bring ropes, ropes to that sea, and we shall drag it into the valley until not even a pebble is to be found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Husha the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel, for the Lord has ordained to defeat the good, good counsel of Ahithophel, and say so that the Lord may bring harm upon Absalom. And who shall send to Zarah and Abiathar the priest? Thus and so did did Ahithophel counsel hmm, counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel. And thus and so I have committed counsel with him. Now therefore send quickly and tell David, do not stay tonight at the fords of the wilderness, that by all means pass it, lest the king and all the people of him be swallowed up. Now Jonathan and Ahimaaz were waiting at Enrogel. The female servant was to go and tell them, and they were to go and tell King David, for they were not to be seen entering the sea. But a young man saw them and told Absalom. So both of them went away quickly and came to the house of a man at Bab, Behera, who had a well in his courtyard, and they went down into it. And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and scattered grain on it, and nothing was known of it. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman at the house, and they said nothing. They said, they said, where are Hemaz and Jonathan? And the woman said to them, they have gone over the brook of water. And when they saw and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. And after they had gone, the men came out of the well, up out of the well, and went and told King David. They said to David, arise and go quickly over the water, for thus and so has a fifth and his fell counsel against you. Then David arose. And all the people who were with him, and they crossed the Jordan. By daybreak, not one who was left had not crossed the Jordan. When Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he sat on his donkey and went off home to his own city. He sent his house in order and hanged himself. Then he died and was buried in the tomb of his father. And David came to Mah- Mahanaim, and Absalom crossed the Jordan with all the men of Israel. Now Absalom had set a master over the army and served Joab. The master was the son of a man named Israel the Ishmaelite. Who had married Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister of Zerubia, Joab's mother. And now, and Israel and Absalom encamped in the land of Gilead. Then David came to Mahanaim, Shobi, the son of Nahash, from Rabbah of the Ammonites, and Makia, the son of Amiel, from Lodabah. And Barzillai, the Gileadite, from Rogel, brought beds, basins, and earthen vessels, wheat, barley, flour, parched grains, beans, and lentils, honey, and curds and sheep and cheese from the herd, for David and the people with him to eat. Well, uh, they said, the people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. And David mustered the men who were with him and set over them commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. And David sent out the army, one third under the command of Jehovah, one third under the command of Abishai, the son of Zerui, Jehovah's Jer- love, and one third under the command of Ittai the Gittite. And the king said to the men, I myself will also go out with you. But the men said, But the men said, You shall not go out, and for if we flee, they will not care about us. If half of us die, they will not care about us. But you are worth ten thousand of us. If half of us die, they will not care about us. And therefore, it is better that you, uh, you send us help from the sea. And the king said to them, Whatever seems best to you, I will do. So the king stood at the side. Of the gate, while well, all the armies marched out by hundreds and thousands. And the king ordered Job and Abishai and Ittai, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to the, all the commanders about Absalom. So the army went, went out into the field against Israel. And the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. And the men of Israel went to fear there by the servants of David. And the loss there was great on that day, 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country, and the forest devoured more people that day than the sword. 
and Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. And Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak, and his head was caught fast, caught fast in the oak, and he was suspended between heaven and earth. And now the mule that was under him went on, and a certain man saw it and told Joab, Behold, I saw Absalom hanging in the oak. Joab had said to the man who told him, What, you saw him? Why then did you not strike him there to the ground? I would have been glad to give you ten pieces of silver and a belt. The man said to Joab, Even if I felt in my hand the weight of a thousand pieces of silver, I would not reach my hand, reach out my hand against the king's son. For I am now hearing the king command you and Abishai and Ittai, for my sake, protect the young man Absalom. On the other hand, if I had dealt treacherously against his life, then you yourself would have stood aloof. And Joab said, I will not waste time like, like this with you. And he took three javelins in his hand and thrust them into the heart of Absalom while he was still alive in the earth. And ten young men, Joab's armor bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. Killed him. And Joab blew the trumpet, and the troops came back from pursuing Israel, but Joab restrained them. And they took Absalom and threw him into a great pit in the forest and raised over him a very great heap of stones. A very great heap of stones. And all Israel fled, every one to his own home. And Absalom in his lifetime had been taken and set up for himself a pillar that is in the king's valley, where he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. He called the king pillar after his own name, and it is called Absalom's monument to this day. And Nehemiah, the son of Zarek, said, Zarek, sir, let me run, run and carry news to the king, that the Lord has delivered him from the hand of his enemies. And Jarek said to him, You are not to carry news to him. You may carry news another day. But today you shall carry to no news, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Kushai, Go and go, go, tell the king what you have seen. The Kushai bowed before Joab and ran. Then Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said again to Joab, Come what may, let me also run after the Kushai. And Joab said, well, Why will you run, my son, seeing that you will have no reward for the news? Come what may, he said, I will run. So he said to him, run. Then he was ran by the way of the plain, and out ran the Kushan. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof of the gate by the wall. And when he lifted up his eyes and looked, he saw a man running away. The watchman called out and told the king, and the king said, If he is alone, there is news in his mouth. Then he drew near and nearer, and the watchman saw another man running. And the watchman called to the gate and said, See, another man running away. And the king said, He also brings news. The watchman said, I think the running of the first is like the running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man and comes with good news. Then Ahimaaz cried out to the king, All was well. And he bowed before the king with his face to the earth. He said, and said, Blessed be the Lord your God, who has delivered up the man who raised a hand against my lord, the king. And the king said, Is it well with the young man Absalom? Um, and he made answer. When Joab sent the king's servant, Yes, sir, I saw a great commotion, but I do not know what it was. And the king said, Turn aside and stand here. So he turned aside and stood still. And behold, the Kushite came, and the Kushite stood. Good news for my lord the king, for well, the lord has delivered you this day from the hand of all who rose up against you. And the king said to the Kushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? And the Kushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up against you. And evil be, and for evil be like that young man. And the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. He said, "O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I have died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son?" And it was told Joab, "Behold, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom." So the victory of you that day was turned into mourning for all the people. For the people heard that day. The king is grieving for his son, and the people stole this into the city that day as people steal the men who are ashamed of when they flee in battle. The king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O my son Absalom, O Absalom, my son, my son. And Joab came into the house to the king and said, You are today covered with shame in the faces of all your servants, who have this day saved your life and the lives of your sons and your daughters and the lives of your wives and your concubines, because you love those who hate you and hate those who love you. For you have made it clear today that commanders and servants have, are nothing to you. For today I know that if Absalom were alive and all of us were dead today, then you would be pleased. Now therefore arise, go out and see kindly to yourselves. For I swear by the Lord, 
if you do not go, if you do not go, not a man will stay with you this night. And this will be worse for you than all the evil that has come upon you from your youth until now. Then the king arose and took his seat in, in the gate. And all the people were told, Behold, the king is sitting in the gate. And all the people came before the king. Now Israel had fled every man to his own home. And all the people were arguing throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king delivered us from the hand of our enemies and saved us from the hand of the Philistines. But now he has fled out of the land, out of the land from Absalom. Absalom, whom he, whom we anointed over us, is dead. He is dead in battle. Now, now therefore, why do you say nothing about bringing the king back? Then King David sent this message to Zadok and Abiathar the priest, Say to the elders of Judah, Why should you be the last to bring the king back to his house? Then the word of all Israel has come to the king. You are my brothers, you are my bone and my flesh. Why then should you be the last, last to bring me back, bring back the king? And I say to the mass, Are you not my bone and my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if you are not commander of my army from now on in place of Joe. And he swayed the heart of all the men of Judah as one man, so that it sent word. they sent word to the king, Return, both you and all your servants. So the king came back over to the Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal, and, and to meet the king, and to bring the king over the Jordan. And Shimei, the son of Gera, the Benjamin, from Bahirim, tarried to come down, with, and the, with the men of Judah to meet King David. And with them were a thousand men from Benjamin. And Zebah, the servant of the house of Saul, with his fifteen sons and his twenty servants, rushed down to the Jordan before the king. And they crossed the ford to bring over the king's household and to do his pleasure. And Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king. And as he was about to pass the Jordan, and said to the king, Let not my lord hold me guilty, or remember how your servant did. Wrong on that day, on the day, my lord, the king left Jerusalem. Do not let the king take a tart, for your servant knows that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I have come to stay, and first of all the house of Dresser, to come down to meet my lord the king. Abishai the son of Zerubi answered, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this? Because he cursed the lord's anointed. But David said, What have I to do with you? Mm. Do with you, you sons of Zeruiah, that you should this day be as an adversary to me. Shall any one be put to death in the Israel this day? For I do not know that I am this day king over Israel. And the king said to Shimei, You shall not die. And the king gave him his oath. And Mephibosheth the son of Saul came down to meet the king. And he, he had neither taken care of his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes. From the day the king departed into the gate, day he came back in safety. And when he came to Jerusalem to meet the king, the king said, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? He answered, O Lord, my king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said to him, I will sell a donkey for myself, that I may ride on it and go with the king. For your servant is lame. He is slandered. He is slandered your servant to my lord the king. But my lord, the king is like an angel of God. Do therefore what seems good to you. For all my father's house were but, like, were but men doomed to death. Before my lord the king, that you set your servant among those who eat at your table. What well, further right have I then to, uh, to cry to the king? And the king said to him, When I speak any more of your affairs, I have decided, You and Zeba shall divide the land. And Mephibosheth said to the king, No, let him take it all, since my lord the king has come safely home. Now Balzillai the Gileanite had come down from Rakeland, and he went on with the king to the Jordan to escort him over the Jordan. Balzillai was a very aged man. Eighty years old, he had provided the king with food when we stayed at Mahanaim, for he was a very wealthy man. And the king said to Barzillai, Come over with me, and I will provide for you with me in Jerusalem. The Barzillai said to the king, How many years have I still to live, that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? And I am this day eighty years old. Can I discern what is pleasant and what is not? Can you serve and taste what he eats or what he drinks? Can I still listen to the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should your servant be an added burden to my lord the king? Your servant will go a little way over the Jordan with the king. Why should the king repay me with such a reward? Please let your servant return, that I may die in my own city near the grave of my lord, near the grave of my father and mother. Now here is your servant, Jimham. Let him go over with my lord the king, and do for him whatever seems good to you. And the king answered, Jimham shall go over with me. And I'll do for him whatever seems good to you, and all that you desire of me, I'll do to you. 
deeply. Then all the people went over the Jordan, and the king went over, and the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him. He returned to his returned to his own home. The king went on to Gilgal, and Shimham went on with him. And all the people of Judah, the, and there's a half of the people of Israel, brought the king on his way. And all the men of Israel came to the king and said to the king, Why have our brothers, the men of Judah, so on your way and brought the king and his household over the Jordan, and all David's men with him? All the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is our close relative. Why are you, why are you angry over this matter? Have we eaten at all at the king, king's expense? Or has he given us any gift? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, We have ten shares in the king, and in David also we have more than you. Why then did you despise us? Will we not for first to sleep of bringing back our king? But the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. Now there happened to be there a worthless man, whose name was Sheba, the son of Bishri, a Benjamite. And he blew the trumpet and said, We have no portion in David, and we have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tent, so Israel. So all the men of Israel withdrew from David and followed Sheba, the son of Bishri. Uh, the men of Judah followed the king steadfastly from the Jordan to Jerusalem. And David came to his house in Jerusalem, and the king took the ten concubines whom he had left to care for the house, for the house, and put them in a house under guard and provided for them. That did not go into them, so they were shut up until the day of their death, living as if in widowhood. And the king said to her master, "Call the men of Judah together with me, together to me within three days, and be here yourself." So the master went to summon Judah, but he delayed before the set and time that had been appointed him. And David said to Abishai, Now Sheba the son of Bitri will do us more harm than Absalom. Take him with servants and pursue him, lest he get himself fortified. Let he get himself to fortified cities and escape from us. And there went out after him Joab's men, and the Cherethites, and the Pelophites, and all the mighty men. And he went out from Jerusalem to pursue Sheba the son of Bitri. And they were at the great stone that is in Gideon, her master came to meet him. Now Joab was wearing a soldier's garment, and over it was a belt with a sword in its sheath fastened on his thigh. And he went, and as he went forward, it fell out. And Joab said to him, Master, Is it well with you, my brother? And Joab took the master by the, his, the beard with his right hand to kiss him. The master did not observe the sword that was in Joab's hand. So Joab struck him with it in the stomach and spilled his entrails to the ground without striking a second blow, and he died. And Joab and Abishai, his brother, pursued Sheba, the son of Bitri. And one of Joab's young men took his stand by a master and said, Whoever favors Joab and whoever is for David, let him follow Joab. And a master lay wallowing in his blood in the highway. And anyone who came by, seeing him, stopped. And when the man saw all that the people, all the people, all the people, that all the people stopped, he carried a master out of the highway into the field and threw a garment over him. And when he was taken out of the highway, all the people went on after Joab to pursue Sheba, the son of Bitri. And Sheba passed through all the tribes of Israel to Abel of Beth Maacah. And all the Bitrites assembled and followed him in. And all the men who were with Joab came, came and besieged him in Abel of Beth Maacah. And he cast up a mound against the city, and it stood against the rampart, and they were battering the wall to throw it down. When the wine, then a wise woman called from the sea, Listen, listen. Tell Joab, come here, that I may speak to you. And he called from her, who came nearer, and the woman said, Are you Joab? Yes, I am. And he, then she said to him, Listen to the words of your son. And he answered, I am listening. And she said, They used to say in former time, Nothing but ask counsel in that at Abel. And so they settled a matter. I am one of those who are peaceable and faithful in Israel. You seek to destroy a city that is a mother in Israel. Why, why will you swallow up the heritage of the Lord? But Joab answered, Far be it from me, far be it, that I should swallow up or destroy. That is not true, but a man of the hill country of Ephraim, called Sheba the son of Bitri, has lifted up his hand against King David. Give up him alone, and I'll withdraw, withdraw from the sea. Withdraw from the sea. And the woman said to Joab, Behold, his head, his head, and shall be thrown to you over the wall. And the woman that went to all the people in her wisdom. And they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bitri, and threw it out to Joab. So he blew the trumpet, and they dispersed from the city, every man to his hand. And Joab returned to Jerusalem to the king. Now Joab was in command of all the army of Israel. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was in command of the Cherethites. 
in the Telephites, and Adoram was in charge of the forced labor. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahala, was the recorder. And Sheva was secretary. And Zadok and Abithal were priests. And Ira the Jairai was also David's priest. Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year. And David saw the face of the Lord. And the Lord sent the blood gill on Saul and on his house, because he put the Gibeonites to death. So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the people of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. Now although the people of Israel had sworn to spare them, Saul had sought to strike them down, strike them down in his zeal for the people of Israel, people of Israel and Judah. And David said to the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you, and how shall I make a turn, that you may bless the heritage of the Lord? The Gibeonites said to him, It is not a matter of silver or gold between us or Saul or his house, neither is it for us to put any man to death in Israel. And he said, Who, what do you say that I shall do for you? And he said to the king, The man who consumed us and planted his trust, now that we should have no place in all the territory of Israel, let seven of his sons be given to us, so that we may hang them before the Lord, at Gibeah of Saul, the chosen of the Lord. And the king said, I'll give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, son of Jonathan, because of the oath of the Lord that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. But the king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, whom she bore to Saul, bore to Saul Armoni and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Merab, the daughter of Saul, whom she bore to Adriel, mm, Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Meholophite, and he gave them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them on the mountain, on the mountain, before the Lord. And the seven of them perished together. They were put to death in the first day of the harvest, at the beginning of barley harvest. And Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, took sackcloth and spread for herself on, for herself on the rock. And at the beginning of harvest, until rain fell upon them from the heavens. And she did not allow the birds of the air to come upon them by day, or the beasts of the field by night. When David was told what Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, the concubine of Saul, had done, David went and took the bones of Saul and the son, bones of his son Jonathan from the men of Jabesh Gilead, who had stolen them from the public square, Bethshan, where the Philistines had hanged them. And on the day the Philistines killed Saul on Gilboa, and he brought up from there the bones of Saul and the bones of his son Jonathan. And they gathered the bones of those who were hanged. And they buried the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan in the land of Benjamin and Zala, in the tomb of Kish's father. And they did all that the king commanded. Uh, and after that, God responded to the plea for the land. And there was war again between the Philistines and Israel. And David went down together with his servants. And they fought against the Philistines. And David grew weary. And Ishbi Benob, Benob, one of the descendants of the giants, whose spear weighed 300 shekels of bronze, and who was armed with a new sword, thought to kill David. And Abishai the son of Zeruiah came to his aid and attacked the Philistine and killed him. And David's men swore to him, You shall, not, shall no longer go out with us to battle, lest you quench the lamp of Israel. And after this, there was again war with the Philistines at Gob. And Zibachai the Hushaphite struck down Saph, who was one of the descendants of the giants. And there was again war with the Philistines at Gob. And Elhanan the son of Jair Oregon, the Bethlehemite, struck down Goliath the Gittite. The shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam, and there was again war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature, who had six fingers on each hand, and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in number, and he also was descended from the giants. And when he taught to Isaac, Jonathan the son of Shimei, David's brother, struck him down. These four were descended from the giants in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. And then David spoke to the word, the Lord, or the words of the son on the day when the Lord delivered him from the hand of the Lord's enemies. Mm. Proverbs, Proverbs 20. Wine is a mock and a strong drink of brawler, but who, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. The terror of a king is like the growling of a lion, and whoever provokes him to anger forfeits his life. It is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife, for every fool will be quarreling. The sluggard does not plan the autumn, he will seek a harvest and have nothing. The purpose of a man's heart is like deep water, but the man of understanding will draw it out. 
will draw it out. Many a man proclaims his own established love, but a faithful man who can find a faithful righteous who walks in his integrity, blessed are his children after him. The king who sits on the throne of judgment windows all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart pure, and I may claim I am clean from my sin. Unequal weight and unequal measures up is like an abomination to the Lord. Even when a child makes himself known by his acts, by whether his conduct is pure and upright. Mm. Uh, hearing ear and seeing eye, the Lord has made them both. Love not sleep, lest you come to poverty. Open your eyes, and you will have plenty of bread. Bad, bad, says the buyer. Well, when he goes away, then he boasts. There is gold and abundance of costly stones. Let the lips of no one precious jewel. Take a man's garment when he has put up security for a stranger, and hold in pledge when he puts up security for foreigners. For a gain by deceit is sweet to a man. To a man, but after his mouth will be full of gravel. The lands are established by counsel, but wise guidance will wait for. Whoever goes about slandering will reveal secrets. Therefore, do not associate with the simple babble. If one curses his father or mother, his lamp will be put out in utter darkness. An inheritance gained hastily in the beginning will not be blessed in the end. And do not say, I'll repay you. Wait for the Lord, and he will deliver you. An evil wait on in an abomination to the Lord. And false scales are not good. How man steps out from the Lord, and how then can man understand his way? It is a snare to say rashly, it is holy, and to reflect only after making vows. A wise king winners the wicked, and drives the wheel away from them. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all his innermost parts. Stavis love and faithfulness preserve the king, and by Stavis love his throne is upheld. The glory of young men is their strength, but the splendor of old men is their gray hair. The blows that wound cleanse away evil, strokes that make strokes may clean the innermost parts. The king's heart is Psalm 118. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who hear the Lord he has fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Have my distress I called on the Lord, the Lord answered me and set me free. When the Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can men do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in men. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surrounded they surrounded me like bees. They went out like a fire among thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling. Let the Lord help me. Now the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of thankfulness. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I may enter through and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate. This is the gate of the Lord, and the righteous shall enter. Shall enter through. Thank. I thank you that you have answered me, and have become my salvation. The stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, and we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray. Give us success. Get blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Find Bind this festival sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. We give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's prayer. Please bow your hands, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yesterday our daily bread, forgive us our debts, and you will receive again our debtors. Please not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.